Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'd like to thank the member from Viewfort South for his North, sorry, for his presentation. Um, you know, this has been a vexing issue for a very long time. And uh, sadly, the day is coming very soon where we're going to have to realize that the mechanism that we've been using in the past, Mr. Speaker, to fund St. Jude's is not working. And the reality is, hopefully the government is able to change its mind and move into the new building. But even worse yet, if they go into the old building, the substantial cost in operations, increase in operations, is going to be a problem, Mr. Speaker. I mean, just to put some basic numbers, the member, Minister, Minister of Health spoke about $19 million as an allocation to St. Jude's. And we've been given Victoria 35 million. And at the 35 million, Victoria was struggling to survive. So far less um, what St. Jude's has been going through. And I want to join the minister in congratulating not just this board, but previous boards. And but in particular, the, the staff and the, the DNA that was left over at St. Jude's of collecting monies and when they can't collect monies to be able to get goods to help reduce the, the operating cost and just basically the general attitude that has been down there. I, I've said and I, I'll say it again in this house, the operating system that was left over from Mercy Hospital at St. Jude's was substantially superior to the operating procedures that we had at Victoria. You go there, the filing system is working, the collection of money, there's just a better sense of organization and management that's taking place at St. Jude. So I want to say that I, I fully support what the member is proposing. I'm only hoping that government is going to absorb and find out how it's going to absorb St. Jude's into its operating system because it cannot continue going the way it, it is going. And it, and it really cries out, um, Mr. Speaker, as to when are we going to introduce, Labour Party calls it universal health care, we call it universal health insurance, but what is going to be the funding mechanism that's going to be adopted? Because the reality is, Mr. Speaker, that when we look at our budget, that the monies that we're allocating are simply enough to cover the cost of wages, utilities, and some capital expenditures. But our hospitals and our healthcare services centers are performing miracles every day in finding a way to operate literally on fumes. And this is one of the biggest issues I think that faces us as a country, not just this government, but how are we going to fund healthcare? Because the reality is, is that we have to be honest with ourselves that despite the best efforts of the people who are working in the hospitals and in the healthcare centers and the Ministry of Health, that goodwill by itself is not going to be enough to deliver the kind of healthcare needs that we need in this country. And I think until we can find a mechanism, Mr. Speaker, in which persons who suffer from diabetes or hypertension can get medication, until we can living habits to reduce this threat, but non chemical diseases is costing this government and the people of this country in their lives and in the cost of, of, of operations significantly. Now I hear members on the other side trying again to, many times I have to come to this house and listen to the interpretation of how I'm supposed to be feeling or what I'm actually saying. We've always spoken about working in parallel. We don't have the luxury of saying that we're going to solve the economy first and deal with the people afterwards, but nor do we have the comfort of saying that we're going to take care of our people and not take care of our economy. When we heard, you know, what, what that, that when the member says that uh, trickle down or uh, supply side economics doesn't work, well, the opposite is also true because it, it, it created the famous words, something went wrong. And what went wrong was, is that nobody would lend us money because we, our house was, our fiscal house was in disarray. 
So the reality is you have to be able to work in a parallel to solve both of these issues. You know, the member, there are members in this house who continue to want to say they don't understand um, business operations or they need to be able to have business operations. When you have a simple issue like the Die Hair Mall, Mr. Speaker, a simple issue. And it's so complicated for some people to understand that you have a building in which government did not have to put any money out and you're getting a building that had almost for 20 years stayed stagnant and not produced anything and now you're going to be able to Remember, get can we Can you stick to the center? Jude Hospital Amendment Act, please. Oh, I see, I see the bazookas out now, Mr. Speaker. Is that what it is? Member, please confine your comments Mr. Speaker, to the bill before. How, how is it? How, members, how is it? members, I want to draw your attention to Stein Order 42 that the Speaker shall be heard in silence. Now, member from Miku South, you shall confine your comments to the bill before you. On a point of clarification, Mr. Speaker, I, at what point do we have it where we're allowed to go or not go? Is that always going to be at your discretion, Mr. Speaker? It is always the Speaker who decides whether you're straight and how far you're straight. So then the theory of the... Remember, bazooka. this is not up for debate. You are to no, confine... You debating. are debating a ruling of the Speaker. I'm not debating a ruling, Mr. Speaker. At all. I'm just asking... Remember, if you're not going to continue, I'll have to ask you to take your seat. Continue the to debate... The, the philosophy of the bazooka theory is now in fact... Is that what I'm supposed to believe? Remember... Because, I mean, I don't understand... Remember, how please okay continue your debate on the bill. Please continue the debate on the bill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, it is absolutely necessary in the conditions that we find ourselves right now that we're going to have to have both a heart and a head. And the reality is, is that this country has been suffering of running long periods of deficits. And we're going to have to find a way to grow this economy. And this trickle effect... Member of Mikusov, what does that have to do with the bill before you? Mr. Speaker, the bill came to the House... The bill is simply a bill to amend the St. Jude Act to allow the government to guarantee loans for St. Jude. This has nothing to do with growing the economy or any other thing. Please confine your comments to the bill. Mr. Speaker, I have to object at this point, Mr. Speaker. Member for, how is member it, for how Miku is it, how is it what I'm not saying is... Member for Miku South, you shall take your seat. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.